Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. I wish I was able to watch this video 10 years ago. It would have substantially sped up my rate of improvement and saved me a ton of time. See, quite a few years ago, I did what many beginner photographers do, spent most of my time researching gear in hopes that new and improved equipment would make me a better photographer. And it wasn't until year three or, I don't know, maybe four, when I started to realize where the majority of my focus should be in order to actually improve my photography. And in this video, I review the proverbial light bulb moment that had the most significant and the most profound impact on my photography because I firmly believe if you want to improve fast, you should become a student of composition. So to jump right into it, the very first thing that kind of really changed my mindset when it comes to composition is something that I like to call focusing on unique perspectives. And this is super, super powerful. This is a, an image that I just started working on from my workshop in the Icelandic Highlands. And uh, I really, really enjoy this photograph. I love the wave action right through here. But the reason that this image was possible is because I was focusing on unique perspectives. Now, I've said this many times before. I've actually mentioned all four of these techniques in videos in the past, but I've never compiled them all into kind of like a greatest hits type of a video before until now. But focusing on unique perspectives is, is insanely powerful because if you think about this, we all have our eyes on the top of our head. That means we all see the world at eye level. We all walk around seeing the world the exact same way. So if you photograph everything at eye level, you're automatically not creating something very unique because that's the way that we see everything on a day-to-day -day basis. There's nothing unique about that. But just by shifting the way that you are photographing something is an amazing way to immediately grab the viewer's attention. And the easiest way to do that is ultimately to, to do anything outside of the norm. So anything outside of just photographing at eye level. One of my favorite techniques is to get very low. I often do that in my photographs to, to get very low to one of my favorite things is moving water like this. I find this is an incredible way to just draw the viewer's attention into the photograph and just create something that's very dynamic in the foreground of an image. Here is another great example here from uh, the Smoky Mountains earlier this year. You might not see that, you might not be able to tell, I should say, when you look at this photograph, but I'm actually crouched down very, very low because if I was standing all the way up, you would be able to see all the way through this kind of tunnel of trees through here. But by getting much lower, you're able to see a lot of this detail in the rock right through here, but you also get all this incredible wave action through here as well. And I, I have a behind the scenes video, I think if I can find it, I'll, I'll show it on the screen right now, of my camera setup as I was capturing this, uh, this scene from uh, Iceland, just to show you exactly how close my camera was to the water. But just by shifting your perspective a little bit, focusing on how do I create something unique? How do I create something that the viewer doesn't see as they just walk around the world? And an amazing way to do that is just to get a little bit low to something. It's a great way to draw the viewer into the image. It doesn't have to be low. You can get, do something uh, in, the, in the sky, very high. But either way, just keeping the mindset of how can I photograph this in a unique perspective is an amazing compositional technique. And it was one of those things that was really like, okay, that kind of changes things a little bit for me. So it was one of my light bulb moments. The next one is create is really focusing on creating depth. If you think about this, and this statement here is one of those things that kind of like jolted my attention a little bit. Photography, it's a two dimensional medium. So if you were to hold a photograph, hold a print, hold a Polaroid, whatever the case may be, if you were to hold that in your hands, that's a two dimensional thing. There is no three, di dimensi three dimensionality to that. But we see the world in 3D. But photography is a two dimensional rendition of what we experience in the three dimensional world. So by thinking about that, how do you create depth in that photograph? You know, obviously there's no way to actually do that, but there are ways to create that illusion that an image has more depth than it actually has. And this is a great technique right here. Another image from Iceland right here. And let me actually have two images here that are a little bit different, but I think this drives home that point a little bit better. So these are the pretty much the exact same scenes which are captured at different times. But the big difference here is, and I don't know if you've noticed it yet, this image here has the edge of the cliff in it, and this image here does not. And when you look at the two photographs, now that I have mentioned that, I think personally, I find the one that has the edge of the cliff, I feel that that image has much more depth in it versus the one that does not. And when you look at them again right here, this one here with the, has the cliff edge, I feel it has a lot more depth to the photograph 
this one here feels a little bit more flat. That's a very subtle thing, but those kind of things are the things that really make a big difference, that kind of create that three-dimensional feeling that a photograph has. And I think, I, I mean, I'm not sure if you agree with me or not, but I really, I enjoy the image on the left, not only because it's got a little bit better color in the sky, a little bit better light up through here, but I find that the depth in this image is much better. I've got a, another example here, let me show you. Uh, this is an image that I, I shared last week. And now it's not, you know, these are definitely different compositions, but it drives home the, the same exact fact. Like this image here on the left, you have all of these rocks right through here. You have the person standing here. I find that this image on the left has substantially more depth to it than this image right here. And the biggest difference is because there's no real perspective as to where the person is standing who is capturing this photograph. This image here definitely feels a little bit more flat. This one has a lot more depth to it. And I think that's what this image here also has as well, because this one has more perspective of where the photographer is standing when they capture this photograph. So this has more real world three dimension versus this image right here on the right. Now the next kind of, I keep calling them light bulb moments because these are the things that just kind of like stop you thinking sometimes and you're going, okay, all right, I, I get that. I never really thought about it like that before. And I say that term a lot, proverbial light bulb moment, because I find that these are those kind of aha moments. And this next one is just to, to focus on what you love. And it sounds a little, a little odd maybe, but when you take a photograph of something, there is something in that scene that you love. Otherwise, you wouldn't take a photograph of it. You are, when you're out on location, you walk by so many things that you don't photograph. Actually, 99% of the things that you walk by when you're out on location, you do not photograph. There's probably only 1% of the things that you travel by that you actually point your camera at. And if you think about that, the things that stop you in your tracks, those are the things that you love. Those are the things that you wanna photograph. So just by focusing on those things, and simplifying, that was one of the things that I found is to be such a game changer to me, is to simplify. This is a good example from the Faroe Islands. It would have been very easy to try, and I, I actually did when, when I was photographing this scene, to try and get a little cute, if you will, just trying to figure out, you know, how do, how do I make it a little bit more unique? Or how do, I, how do I change this? Or how do I, you know, apply more compositional techniques to try and make it a little bit more interesting? Well, some scenes don't need that. Sometimes if you just focus on what you love and focus on simplifying the scene because it's very easy to create an overly complex photograph when you really don't need to. And I think that this is a great example of it. I took a lot of different types of compositions of the scene and I kind of just kept coming back to this right here. Just a standard photograph of these huts. These huts were beautiful in itself with the grass growing on top. There's beautiful light coming through here. It was misty, a little bit foggy, kind of created some nice, at, nice atmosphere, and the light was absolutely beautiful. So just by simplifying the scene, don't clutter it all up, and just focus on what you love. That's a great technique as well. Another example, this is back in the Highlands. All these are, are new photographs from my recent two trips to the Faroe Islands and uh, Iceland and the Smoky Mountains as well, and a couple from the Tetons is also later on in this video. But this right here, there, there's not a lot to this photograph. These beautiful hot springs right here, the steam on the left and right side, the beautiful clouds in the background, and I just got very, very low to the scene, zoomed in a little bit, and just focused on what I love the most. Try to simplify this photograph. Don't get very um, fancy with it all because there's so many compositional techniques out there. It's very, very easy to try and start applying all of these different things to it. And a lot of times you end up with just an overly complex photograph when you really don't need to. And this is a good example of that. One of my favorite puffin shops that I shared in last week's video, just by zooming in, decluttering, and just focusing on what you love. Sometimes less is more, actually oftentimes less is more in photography. And just by zooming in on the puffin right here with the fish, this very, this is not a very uh, complex composition at all. Just uh, love the, the foreground is slightly out of focus. And of course, the, the, the puffin staring right at me with the, the fish in his mouth is absolutely gorgeous. So sometimes just less is more and just focusing on what you love and just trying to kind of simplify the scene. Now, the last one, and this is also very, very simple, but this is something that really kind of dawned on me a few years ago. So what I, what I used to do is I would go on location and I would immediately start looking for a composition. I would find a composition, I would perfect that composition, I'd set everything up, and then I'd wait. 
and I would wait and I would wait and I would wait in hopes that something interesting would happen. And the interesting thing that I was hoping for is two, two things. One, light, two, atmosphere. So I waited for light to come to my composition. I waited for atmosphere to come to my composition. Yeah, sometimes it worked. Most of the time it did not. And what happened is a lot of times I spent time just sitting there on one composition, just waiting and hoping something would happen. And oftentimes it didn't. So if you just focus on the light and photograph the light, so wherever there's interesting light happening, photograph that and build a composition around that. And when that light fades, see, is there anywhere else where there's interesting light? And if there's light over here, photograph that light because interesting light can make literally anything look much better. Here's an amazing example of this from the Tetons. You might not notice it when you look at this photograph. I mean, obviously, the, I think the light in the mountains is very obvious, but the light on this barn is, is extremely nice. And it's very, whoops, it's subtle also. But now look at this. I've got the same image captured just a few moments later with no light on the barn. And look at the difference. Pretty much the exact same composition. This one's just zoomed out just a little bit further. But the difference between these two scenes, the light in the mountains is still the same, but the light on the barn is completely different. And it absolutely transforms this entire photograph. So interesting light can literally make anything looks so, so much better, but it doesn't always happen. This is an image from uh, the, the Blue Ridge Mountains last year. This is a scene that most people walk by. I've actually walked by this tree many, many times and never taken a photograph of it once. But as I was walking through here, I actually made an on-location video while I captured this photograph last year. But when I was walking by, I saw this beautiful fog right through here and I saw this incredible light that only lasted a couple moments, but I quickly pulled out my setup, got everything set up, created a quick composition around it and made this photograph right here. And I absolutely love it. It is by far one of my favorite photographs I've ever captured in the Blue Ridge Mountains. And it's not because it's an incredible scene because this is just your everyday average kind of gnarly looking tree, but it has got beautiful light and it has some beautiful atmosphere. So just focusing on the light in the atmosphere is an incredible technique. Once again, right here, these are just some random trees in the Dolomites but it's got some beautiful light raking across it. And as I was sitting here, just kind of looking around for a composition, I was just focusing on the light. And I swung over to the right and I saw all this beautiful light just raking across these trees. These trees had some nice fall color associated with the leaves and it just absolutely looked beautiful. I love the, the kind of warm and cool color cast between these two, or I should say contrast between the, the, the two colors. And I absolutely loved it. But once again, not an incredibly interesting subject, but the beautiful light is what it's all about. One more example here, just a, a random road in the Smokies. It happens to have some very nice light on it. Uh, oh, actually, I lied. Here's one more photograph of a, a scene in the Faroe Islands. Just because it has this nice light in the background really pulls this entire photograph together because if this light wasn't here, this image would look a little bit flat. So focusing on the light, when you get on location is absolutely one of those things that completely changed my mindset for, from, from my own photography. Because like I said, I never used to do that. I would always get to a location and I immediately said, okay, I got to find a composition. I need foreground, midground, background. And I started to try and assemble a scene the moment I got on location. But by, and I still think that's fine to do a little bit, but I definitely would recommend not finding a, a composition, setting everything up and just sitting there and waiting and hoping something happens, some, hoping light or atmosphere comes to your composition because most of the time it will not. So putting a, 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 an additional emphasis on where interesting light is happening in the area that you're in, where interesting atmosphere is in the area you're in, maybe there's nothing going on and that's still steer, steer you in a different direction. But a lot of times just focusing on light and atmosphere is an amazing way to create something very, very beautiful. So those four things are the things that really change the way that I look at composition. So focusing on unique perspectives, focusing on creating depth, focus on what you love and simplify things and try not to make an overly complex or an overly cluttered photograph. It's very easy to do that because oftentimes with uh, landscape photography, we're using those wider focal lengths. And with a wider focal length, you are able to capture a huge swath of the landscape. And a lot of times, it's easy to put too many things in that scene and it creates an, an overly busy photograph. So focus on what you love and simplify, simplify, simplify. And the last thing, focus on the light, photograph the light. Don't hope that the light comes to your composition, 
Go where the light is, go where the atmosphere is. That's another amazing way to create compelling photographs because at the end of the day, beautiful light can make the most mundane subjects look absolutely incredible, which is evident right here. This is just your average scene. I mean, it's, it's a, it's, I wouldn't say this is an average scene, but it's, a, it's an exciting scene, but I really, really do enjoy it mainly because of this light back here. It just draws the viewer all the way through the scene. And I think that that is absolutely gorgeous. It's one of my favorite aspects of the photograph. So I do hope that that information was helpful. I know that those are the things that really change the way that I look at composition. And before I do wrap things up here, I do just want to say a big thanks to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a robust and beautiful online platform to develop your website. You can showcase your photography using Squarespace's new blueprint design system to help guide you through the options to building your online presence from the ground up. You can even display your photography using Squarespace's flexible website design templates and customize the layout in order to make it your own. And with Squarespace's online store feature, you'll have access to all the tools you need to start selling your physical goods, digital content, or service products online with ease. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out Squarespace squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I do hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you have any questions about anything that was covered, I know there was a lot of information covered in this week's video, but if you do have any questions, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as humanly possible. And if you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really, really do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today. I know that we are all busy. We are all living busy lives. And it really does mean a lot to me for you to just carve out a little bit of your schedule to, uh, to listen to me rant about things that I absolutely love. It means a lot. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.